and Meenal, you can go offline because you the can account, sir, could you help me with your current uh, affiliation, sir? So I'm unemployed right now. So. <laughs> you can talk about his affiliation to you. I, I'll go with... Uh, I, I Good evening, everyone. Welcome to I Focus Online Lecture 213 and the Retina Session 65. And this happens to be the Retina Quiz. And uh, it is held by the quiz masters, Dr. Apurva Ayachit, Dr. Kaushik Tripathi, and Dr. Divakant Mishra, who happen to be the integral members of UC, who have taken UC to a very high platform. And we thank all of you for making sure that the youth has been a part of AIOS. So this is an open retina quiz for all the members. And uh, so what we request you all to do is please download the Kahoot app or log into www.kahoot.it and enter the game pin that I will be mentioning soon and join for the quiz. And uh, we have Lalit Verma sir here and Santosh sir here. Uh, I think Lalit Verma sir, it would be great if you can mention the awards for the winners today to get them a little excited about it. Olika, this is a, a great moment uh, for us today because uh, 65 episodes of Retina can't imagine anywhere on the earth, actually. And uh, I think last day is always the most important day. No, Santosh? Yes. And uh, you see, on the last day, uh, always, always most important event is held. And we have with us none else than the UC people with us. The youth who is, uh, you know, going to represent or are already representing uh, uh, India everywhere. And I'm very happy this UC is, uh, you know, doing such a great job in such a short span of time they have blossomed into a very big force, not only nationally, in fact, they have shown the door to international people also. And uh, you see the youth for whom uh, uh, the entire eye focus was uh, focused, in fact, uh, the entire focus of eye focus was on youth. And I'm happy that uh, you see today they, they are, uh, you know, conducting this quiz on a very, very nice platform. So uh, best of luck to all the uh, participants. And the quiz are in the uh, quiz is in on a on a very nice platform Kahoot dot in. It's a very uh, you know objective kind of platform, no subjectivity at all. So that's the beauty of that uh, platform. And the prizes are runners up uh, get five uh, k worth Amazon gift vouchers, and the winner gets ten k ten thousand buck Amazon gift vouchers. Plus, plus, so you see the top five people also get uh, certificates also from uh, from Santosh. So, uh, so best of luck to all. And uh, I think Santosh, we should wait for at least five minutes. Let maximum people join. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah. so that uh, Rolika, what is the score? How many people have joined till now? No, they will join once we announce the game pin, sir. Yeah. yeah. Go okay. Online, please, Rolika, then... please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes. Just sharing it. So this is the game pin that you can see on top. That is 6034234. So all of you are requested to use this game pin and join the quiz. As soon as you join, your names will start popping up on the screen. So we'll wait for everyone to join. Oh, that is quite interesting. They can use their first name to join if uh, yeah. instead of you know uh, initials, so that we know who they are. I think this is going to be fun. I see a lot of postgraduates are uh, <laughs> absolutely yeah. just in the first ten seconds. We have so many joining in. Absolutely right, sir. If you want to increase the prize money, please fill. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh... Let's see, in case it touches 50, I will make it double. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so, while, the, uh, while everyone's joining in, let me just brief you a little bit. So, our uh, quiz masters are Dr. Apurva Ayachit, Dr. Kaushik Tripathi, and Dr. Devakant Mishra, sir. And um, 
over here the questions will be popping up on the screen and the questions will hold on for 20 seconds and it has to be quite quick so this this is the part where we are trying to check how fast you are at reading the question and how fast you are at answering your question uh whatever goes on on zoom is going to come on your screen at the same time so you don't need to be connected on the same platform as zoom it will be showing up on your device itself and uh, please be quick while answering your questions so as soon as you see the question you wait for some time the timer will click on the left hand side and click on the correct answer and you can join in yeah but it's always a good idea to use two devices if you use your laptop to view the quiz <clears throat> then you can answer on your mobile and vice versa you can uh, use youtube live or facebook live which will be streamed simultaneously and that's it basically it's uh, uh, kahoot calculate scores based on fastest finger first whoever answers faster gets a higher score than whoever answers little later 55 have joined sir <laughs> <laughs> You see the, the kind of uh, kind of enthusiasm, enthusiasm people have. Yes. It's a nice, uh, you know, uh, this thing to see that so many people uh, want to participate. And I'm actually very happy that uh, you know it becomes a very competitive this thing, and scores are leveled. Or that will be real test. It's going to 61 and to 63. Oh. 63. Once the names stop popping, you can stop. It's like you know, microwave yeah. popcorn. Once we stop hearing the pop sounds, we stop. Something like that. So let's see if it goes higher. And our quiz masters have decided that they would like to discuss the questions right there and then, so that you don't have a recall uh, query. So as soon as the question gets done, they will enlighten you with the answer and why the answer is so and so. So that will help you all to keep it in mind. Is that right, sir? Uh, can you please request people to give their real name so that we uh, it is easier to mm. address them later? Yeah, that would be great. So, Rockstar Pelican Twelve, would we would love to know your name. <laughs> no, <laughs> and it's, it's okay. Once the also. top, you know, the top five, can we can always take a screenshot and announce, ask them to send their particulars to one of our mobile numbers so that we can send them. Sixty-nine is now current position. Seventy. How many total, uh, Purva? How many total questions, Oshik? Thirty-five, sir. Thirty-five. So we should be able to finish in time. Easily. Sir. We have five more as backup. Okay. If we have time, but I don't know if she has uploaded them on Kahoot. I think only thirty-five. Thirty-five we have uploaded, we have uploaded because. Uh, yes. The stems were longer. Rolika, how many minutes have passed? Sir, seventy-seven people have joined. No, no, that I can see. Eight, but in eight minutes. So let's uh, because we said five minutes. We will book it. So we start with eight uh, ten. Is that okay, sir? Because oh, yeah, should be should be fine. Yeah. Now some of the people are messaging me about the link, so just okay, wait okay. for them to just join. More the merrier, actually. Yes, sir. So, should I say a certificate of participation should be given to everybody? A certificate, a certificate of merit to you know people uh, who are top five, and yes. then winner and uh, and uh, then uh, runner up. Sure. We'll we'll do that. I think this is one of the maximum participation in any quiz. Uh, active participation, eighty-three. So everybody has been asking me for the past five days about when the OC quiz will be there. Oh. So yeah, we have everybody waiting already. Just a request to all the participants, and uh, if you really would like to have the discussion part, please make sure that you're logged on to YouTube. 
or Facebook so that you can hear the discussion by the quiz masters. They have put in their level best to give you these questions so that you get, you know, to take home messages also. So that would be wonderful if you can hear the discussions. We have reached 87. I think we can start now. We are at 810. Okay. So let's start with the first question. Koshik sir, let's begin. Yes. So again, the quiz will be played on Kahoot. There will be 20 questions. 35 questions. 20, 35. And each question will have four possible answers. The time to answer each question is 20 seconds. Once the time lapses, the sec last selected answer will be considered final. If none of the options is selected within the time limit, auto pass will be locked. And the quiz master's decision is always final. So this is a patient. Uh, we'll show the images later. Uh, he's uh, complaining of nyctalopia and the fundus photo and the images of digits are given. There are extra digits. So what do you think is the most uh, possible mutation in this patient? Can we discuss? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. So this is budded beetle syndrome, retinitis pigmentosa with polydactyly. Uh, there may be multiple other uh, features, including hypogonadism, mental retardation, renal abnormality, etc. <coughs> Next. So the correct answer was PBS1 PBS mutation. One. Yeah. And we have 14 people who have answered it correctly. So let's see how the scoreboard goes. So okay, this is the so real-time scoring, Abhinaya. Mm -hmm. Although everybody has answered it correctly, uh, the fastest one gets to top at each yeah. point. So Abhinaya leading. Let's go to second question. So this is the fundus appears normal, but there are some findings in the Hegelberg multifocal. Multicolor imaging and near infrared imaging and also OCT shows something in the choroid. So what is the most likely other finding in this case? Wow. So a lot of people have answered it correctly, Kaushik sir. So this is list nodule. Uh, this is a recently uh, described uh, feature of neuropyronotosis type 1 choroidal nodules which is seen more than 80% of cases of neurofibromatosis type 1. And uh, also this LIS nodule is seen very commonly after 20 years of age, almost uh, more than 90% cases. So LIS nodule is the answer. So 25 people have answered it correctly. Let's see what's happening on the scoreboard. We are still at top. No, oh, RSV. Oh. RSV has taken up the scoreboard. Hmm. So all, all of you should remember, please fastest finger first wala baat hai. So, yes. yes. Yeah. So this is Good. a 22 year old female and she has uh, some finding on the right eye. Uh, the OCT finding is also uh, shown. So what is the diagnosis? Combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium, CHRP, or hard exudates. Wow, so majority of people have got your question right, sir. That's yeah. very good. So this is a, this uh, is when you know retina people are answering <laughs> and not so many post graduates. Yes. <laughs> this is combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium. Which is which should be suspected in all cases of epithelial membrane in young age people. So this omega sign has recently been described by Dr. Vinod Kumar and his group. This is a typical finding seen in CHRRP. And also the patient had cuticular drusen in both eyes. Okay. Now let's go on to the scoreboard. Let's see how is that going. 
Okay, Abhinya is back on the scoreboard and so is AH. That's wonderful. So the score is popping up because yeah. of the speed. Speed is okay. very crucial. <clears throat> so this is a figure of two patients on uh, daughter and her, her mother. They have both have hearing loss and uh, they have this feature on fundus photo and autoclorosis. So what is the most likely diagnosis? It more decay, user syndrome or MIDD? Autoclorosis is clearer. Wow, so you really got a tough question there. <laughs> so this is maternally inherited diabetes and deafness. It uh, the classically described features are like uh, phobia is squared, but there is garland like areas of atrophies around the phobia. Uh, and the uh, deafness and uh, early onset diabetes mellitus is same, and you have to do uh, mitochondrial genetic testing to confirm this thing. And also, autofluorescence makes the changes more prominent, as seen in her mother. Okay. Approval, this, is really tough, this is a really tough question. Yeah, but no? certain, the answer is in the uh, yeah. name itself. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, good. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we have new fresh names on the scoreboard. Oh, yeah. Nikita all, is all. up on it and PG and AH are following. Let's see what happens next. So this is a bilateral similar fundus photo. Uh, you can see the angiogram also. There uh, is PUD uh, orange appearance in the temporal macula, and there are something some uh, sub structure subretinally thread like structures. So what is the likely advice? Oh, nice. That's a good number. This is a patient yeah. with angioate streaks and uh, this patient had pseudoxanthoma elasticum and there was uh, the skin changes also. Such cases have fragile Brooks membrane and they are prone to have uh, subretinal bleeds, multiple subretinal bleeds after minor trauma. So they should avoid high velocity sports. Right. So let's see what's going on with the scoreboard. Do we have new names coming up? Oh, so SD has come up and Nikita and PG are still on the scoreboard. Great going. This is the patient with right eye visual decline and we'll show the fundus photo next. And this is the fundus photo. There is some uh, hemorrhage and uh, on OCT there is some changes and ultrasound is also showing something. So what is the most likely management for this case. I, I think we all are very happy to see that number pop up. 50 people have got it right. Yes, I still wonder four people have got focal laser as the answer. <laughs> this is CNVM with subretinal bleed in a case of choroidal osteoma. The ultrasound is showing uh, acoustic shadow which is confirming calcification and there is subretinal fluid. This is active CNVM and we need to treat it with intermittent lens as well. Right. Kaushik sir, I must say you've chosen questions very well. You've put it together. Like all the topics that have been covered in the past few classes, you've made sure that all of them are here in it. A lot of hard work has gone into preparing questions. Yes, sir. Nikita again. PG uh, is on fire. <laughs> so that's Nikita is still there and SD and PG are following. That's amazing. Moving on to the next question. This patient, this child is uh, saying that he was okay, but recently he is uh, having altered behavior and falling again and again. Uh, the uh, he is admitted in pediatric neurology uh, uh, ward, and the when he presented there, the uh, there was a scar in the left eye, right eye appeared normal, but then right eye also had some hemorrhages and some changes. There was some EEG changes also. So what is the most diagnostic test? 
right? So we have 34 people who have got it right. There was a thin line between gene testing and RPGR also. So this uh, typical macular retinitis is typically described in subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. And the uh, appearance is quite cl uh, classic, and there there may be hemorrhagic retinitis also. This EEG was shown to uh, uh, clinch to the diagnosis SSP, and we should do CSF measles antibody to uh, confirm the diagnosis. This right eye having hemorrhage is a little rare. First of all, it's a rare diagnosis. Yes. That having hemorrhage like that is yeah. even rarer, I think. Yeah, but hemorrhagic retinitis has been reported in multiple cases. Okay, that's wonderful. Let's see what's with the scoreboard now. Wow, we have stagnant names out there. Nikita yeah, is Yeah. Yeah. Very but well. we have new names coming up, sir. Sharat and Shikant are still. What does it mean? Up. PG has highest answer speak of six. Yeah, so that means that PG has been answering all the questions back to back, okay. correct? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Last six questions all are correct, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is a 10-year-old who complains of recent on -test onset acquired black night blindness and sleep lamp image shows something. So what is the management you will do? Genetic testing, VEP, vitamin A capsules or observe? These people should get right. Number of participants has gone high now, 104. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I was hoping for this. <laughs> Excellent. So this is vitamin A deficiency, and because this is acquired night blindness, vitamin A will uh, reverse the night blindness in this patient. That's wonderful. I'm sure the ones with the genetic testing answer must have thought, Kuch to garbar hai as answer mein. it's best to go for this one. <laughs> Can't be so simple. <laughs> Can't be so simple. So SD has climbed up and um, Nikita and Sharath have maintained second and third position. Okay, moving on to the next question now. This is the 10th question. So this is a 55-year-old diabetic female and both eyes are similar and we are showing the fundus photo and angiogram, early angiogram and late angiogram. There is some, uh, some changes around the phobia and what would you do? The OCT shows some intraretinal hyperreflective spaces. Now, this was a tricky one. Kaushik sir had you guys there with that <laughs> first answer. No, he, he, he actually fooled a lot of people. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, Kaushik, you can go ahead. I'll, I'll make a small comment after So, this is macular telangitis, a type yeah. 2 very uncommon but it's it will show leak temporal to the macula there will be intraretinal hyperreflective spaces but an intraretinal anti vgf has a uh, uh, unreliable role in cases without cnbm if there is cnbm you need to inject but without cnbm these cases are better observed alone yeah observation is the best answer yes, but uh, the lesson to be learned is that all hyperforesis in diabetes does not mean uh, diabetic maculopathy or injection of uh, anti -VGF. Right. So let's see what's happening on the scoreboard. With the confusion, I think we must have shuffled a few names there. Yes. So SD, Sharat and Shrikant are on the lead with Nikita and Abhinya next. So let's see. This is the 10th question, by the way. Sorry for the confusion. So this is the some uh, peculiar feature on vessels, arteries in a 65-year-old patient in one eye. So this is their, uh, the image is not there. There are some white Listen along the vessel, along the arteries. So, what would you rule out in this case? Embola, retinitis, congenital abnormality, or giant cell arteritis? Again, you had them, so. <laughs> Actually, I think image was a little uh, hazy. Uh, it, it, but there are, this is chiralis arteriolitis. Periarticular plaque, which is seen in retinitis. Toxoplasma right. polyretinitis, CMB retinitis, acute retinal necrosis can be associated. You'll have to look at the periphery in this case. And this patient had acute retinal necrosis. This is a very uh, typical. There is no embolus and angiography will not show any block here. Right. 
Okay, so let's see what's happening on the scoreboard again. Oh, it's the same. It stays the same. Yeah, it's static. So don't worry, people. There is a streak of uh, uh, easy questions coming up. So it How will help you. How do you know, Rolika? Easy questions coming up. <laughs> so they are. <laughs> So there, there is a twin, uh, young male who has this retinal lesions in the periphery. There are some uh, lesions who are which are connecting two vessels or like that, and there is exudates around around the uh, lesion. There are multiple sub lesions. So what would you do? In this, this, this is okay easier. <clears throat> That's good to see. <laughs> Excellent. This is yeah. retinal capillary hemangioblastoma. Hemangioma or hemangioblastoma. Von Eichfeld-Lindau disease has to be ruled out in such cases. Cerebral hemangioblastoma is associated with such cases. <clears throat> Subthreshold microprolapse laser is very mild laser, and it will not be will not help in regression of the these lesions. So on the scoreboard we have. Stagnant more, names. More or less static, yeah. So people need to buck up. You you need to be faster for the question and also precise. So it's both hand in hand. So this is there is unilateral dimness of vision in 12 year old female. She is having some treatment for in pediatric department and she has this. Quietis lesions, there are hemorrhages and in this case also involved. What systemic disease should be ruled out in such uh, a child? Okay. This is CMB retinitis, and retinitis is also there, the hemorrhages. Are typically more and vitreitis is less in CMB retinitis. Immunosuppression has to be ruled out, and usually, though it is associated with AIDS, it can be associated with leukemia, lymphoma, and after hematopoietic stem cell transplants. CD4 usually less than 50. Again, postgraduates, I'm trying to highlight here that Koshis has made sure that your all your topics are getting covered. So he has put it very uh, schematically. Okay, so we have a new a person on top, yeah. that is Sharad. Great. Let's move on to the next question. That is the 13th question. So this is an uh, image of 24-year-old male. And we have taken the, on the right side, the images are as of now. And on the left side, the images are after three hours of dark adaptation. So what is likely to be true in this case? The color change, fundus color changes on dark adaptation in this patient. So this is Mijuo Nakamura phenomena on which the uh, pandas appears bright golden color. And when we, uh, uh, this, uh, after dark adaptation, the color comes to near normal. And uh, this is usually seen in August disease, which is autosomal recessive. Typically, vision is very nice, in such, very good in such, in such cases. So that's still at top. You muted, Brodika. <clears throat> this is a 42 year old female with similar appearance. Like there is some giraffe like appearance in both the eyes with this OCT showing uh, subretinal fluid and exploitative RD. And an autofluorescence and fundus fluorescence angiogram is shown. What would be the next best step? So you gave away by saying the giraffe like appearance. Yeah. Yes, it's like it's typical feature of BDA, bilateral diffuse axial monocytic proliferation, and uh, you have to rule out malignancies, occult malignancies in such, in such cases. <clears throat> Yes, so that's a good uh, pick by nice, 52. Very nice picture, very nice picture. 
let's see what's on the scoreboard we have new new names now so sd and pg have bugged up again that's great and uh, sharat nikita and abhinya are the first three going on right now let's see what's with the 15th question <clears throat> this present a similar appearance in both the eyes positive macula shows subretinal fluid which is more towards the disc what is the next best step in this case there is uh, no retroenteral or vitreous uh, anterior chamber cell this is the feature in both the eyes in this is an easy one yeah only you are right <laughs> that's wonderful this kidima papillima with cotton spots in both eyes so you have to get bp and most likely these patients are do not have history of bp hypertension but they have bp in range of 220 by 120 like this so blood pressure should be checked in malignant hypertension right so let's see on the scoreboard i hope we see some new names okay we have a reshuffling happening here that's good enough so we'll quickly move on to the 16th question so when volk super quartz 160 length is used and the machine is showing 200 micron spot spot size what is the spot size in retina machine shows 200 and you are using volk super quartz 160 length what is the spot size in retina tricky but easy yeah you got them so <laughs> so this is volk super quad and most of the other lenses used to do prp have magnification factor of 2 so this will be 400 micron in the retina 200 right. in so i think we are having a major reshuffling happening here in the five names but this with my experience you must mistakes or slowness are very unforgiving in kahoot i think <laughs> <laughs> so presence Absolutely. of mind everything is required na reflexes presence of mind yeah by the way personal experience the last few questions they change everything yeah. always so hold on to it what is the field of view in this in the image 130 degree 180 degree 150 degree or 200 degree wow that's good enough we are happy with that this is an optos image and it gives 200 degree field of view this is a pseudo color image and this high uh, panoramic image is possible due to ellipsoid mirror and there is a second uh, focal point which is behind the pupil right let's see what's on the scoreboard now we have a little jumble up happening here that's great i'm also getting new feeders down at the bottom that uh, few people are back in the game and uh, going with a streak of 3 in a row that's great charuta is back in the game this is the 18th question so this is there are there are some uh, images of uh, fundus photo i we are back and now the disease has definitely progressed so what specific medication can be given to possibly reduce the progression of this disease right eye image is more classical left eye image was 5 years back so you got a tricky one again so this <laughs> is chiral atrophy and uh, ornithine amino transferase ornithine and mm. amino transferase is uh, uh, <laughs> in this case which is dependent on pyridoxal pyridoxin can be given in this cases to possibly reduce the progression and also ornithine should be reduced in such cases so this disease known as hoga hoga hyperornithemic gyrate atrophy 
or nitin they see and probably answer that yeah yeah, yeah correct okay let's see on the scoreboard now oh is it stagnant ah uh, nothing moved good good so oh, good going I but there is a difference of only 80 marks in 100 or 200 points yeah, yeah. we will be in for a surprise we will be in for a surprise halfway through it's definitely going to be a surprise by the end this is a 2 year old male who is born to consanguine marriage and now uh, he doesn't reach for object and the fundus photo shows something uh, there is some whitening around the cobia and what is the diagnostic test okay this is cherished spot in a child who is uh, having this uh, global neurological regression and he also has a coloboma so the, you uh, you have to rule out other causes of cherished spots including tetrasis disease this child had tetrasis <laughs> blood for hexosaminidase uh, hexosaminidase hexosaminidase a should be done in such case okay let's see on the scoreboard now So as I said, there's a there's just a point of difference, and things change. So Shikant is back on top. Mm. Let's see what's for the next question. So this is the question. The when you are using twenty D, where is the image form? Everybody should get. Uh, I think uh, this, now we are surprised. In terms wrongly in terms, uh, this is. I think you have to correct this thing. The correct answer is inverted real and between twenty D and the observer. Doctor Rolika, can you change this or we can you uh, avoid this question? Yeah, yeah, sure. We can. We can. Yeah, I think let's let's skip this and we put another question. We have a couple of questions. Yes, yes, yes. No problem. We'll skip yeah. this question from that. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one. So, guys, I'm the internal examiner. The most effective <laughs> method of reducing post cataract end of is. Please choose from the four options. Your external examiner was very tough. So I'm the <laughs> internal who will come and pass everyone with the motherly touch. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is uh, C. Like I said, installation of povidone iodine in the conjunctival sac has been the only proven of way of uh, reducing the incidence of post cataract endophthalmitis. Okay, so that everybody got it correct. Yeah, the motherly touch is here, and now things are going to change on the scoreboard. <laughs> Don't I you wish you would say sisterly touch and not motherly. I'm not so. <laughs> Yossi, okay. uh, Rolika, Yossi, hai. Yossi, hai. <laughs> so, what is this iridectomy called? Is it a basal iridectomy, endos, optical, or a sectoral? So, you yeah. see one more very typical sign there. Yeah. Again, majority will have correct. Yes. Yeah. Great. So, eighty-five people have said that this is an endos inferior PI, and the sign that you saw of the emulsified oil was of a hyperolean. So, the oil is above. That's why it's called a hyperolean, and it is emulsified. So, this is an endos inferior PI done in aphakic patients filled with silicone oil. The endos was a Japanese, uh, you know, retina surgeon who. Oh, devices technique. Right. So let's see what's happening on the scoreboard. Abhinya has come up with the sisterly touch happening. <laughs> <laughs> right. Apurva, ma'am, next question. Yeah. 
So a 27 year old woman has a mutton fat KPs, posterior sinicae, broad base, peripheral anterior sinicae in both the eyes. AC has three plus cells, anterior vitreous also has cells. So which test would you not do? There's no view of the fundus. So which of these tests would you not do? So we would do an ultrasonography because there is no view. The MONTU and ACE levels have to be done because this is a granulomatous uveitis. Uh, HLA B27, RA factor and ANA profile, these tests are reserved for patients with non-granulomatous uveitis. So we need not do this test battery of investigations when you have a straightforward granulomatous uveitis. Just to encourage everybody, so Dr. Dalit Verma has approved of 15K as the first price, 10K as the second, and third is 5K. So now please buck up. Because, uh, because I had promised that we'll double after 50, but uh, you see, and see, seeing the enthusiastic response, I thought uh, let's uh, have one, two, three rather than only one, two. Yes, but, sir. So generous of you, and I'm sure that now people are getting more uh, excited about answering it quickly. So we still have five people stagnant names there, but there's not much of difference there. Okay, so just three hundred uh -huh. pointers. So buck up, everyone. So what is the immediate side threatening complication of intravitreal steroid? Immediate. Is it endophthalmitis, macular toxicity, CRAO, or a steroid response with IOP rise? I hope everybody gets this right. Immediate, the buzzword being immediate. You are helping out with all the hints, ma'am. Yeah, I am very nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't get an IOP rise due to a steroid response immediately. It's a delayed complication, if at all. A CRAO due to, due to sudden rise in intraocular pressure is the correct answer. That's wonderful. Let's see what's happening here. Oh, come on. <laughs> so there is a reshuffle. But yes. Uh, I must say there's a double map. 31 players of region answers 3-4. So that yeah, is yeah, the yeah. sisterly touch here. So every time you get how many? How many if you had a fastest and uh, how many marks you get? So that yeah. is all okay. relative, sir. It depends on the number of people. Okay. and okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's quite intuitive. Hmm. So, 35-year-old man with macula of inferior bullous RD with break at 11 o'clock, fakic patient, no PVD. What would you like to do as a first line? Would you do a pneumatic retinopexy? Would you do a scleral buckle? Would you do a vitrectomy with endolaser and gas? Or would you put a belt, a vitrectomy, cryo and oil? So, how to proceed? So, anytime there is a young patient with no PVD and is fakic and it is a superior break amenable to pneumatic, the first uh, line would be to do a pneumatic retinopexy. Always a trial of pneumatic retinopexy is advisable before going in for more invasive surgeries. Yeah. The scoreboard has new leads coming up. But MRG no, has the highest very, very, very close. Very, very close. Yeah. <laughs> Two points. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on to the next one. So right eye tractional detachment uh, involving macula. Left eye is a stable laser PDR with 6-9. What is the appropriate treatment? Uh, intravitreal injection followed by surgery five days later or an intravitreal followed by uh, surgery 15 days later, PRP for the attached retina or <coughs> explain the prognosis and leave alone. I hope everybody gets this right. <laughs> Majority, mommy. Wow. Like 15 people want to leave it alone. No, please don't do that. I mean, depends really on expertise and all that. But okay, that should not be your first answer. A very straightforward answer is uh, intravitreal anti of agent followed by vitrectomy, endolaser and silicone oil only five days later. Studies have shown that you can give a gap of anywhere between three and ten days 
following uh, the uh, anti vegf injection 15 days is rather too late because when you give an anti vegf uh, sometimes the the vascularity gets converted to fibrosis there's a crunch effect which causes more traction and detachment so it can get combined uh, it can go into a combined retinal detachment as well so the gap has to be anywhere between 3 and 10 days not more than that in today's era of mivs don't uh, just leave it alone exactly sir okay let's see what's happening on the scoreboard a reshuffle is happening <laughs> i can just imagine the intense environment in these five rooms right now <laughs> <laughs> So, which of these is pathognomonic of blunt trauma? First year residency question: Is it a CRAO, a supranasal retinal dialysis, an HST in the superior quadrant, or a bullous retinal detachment? Please get this right, otherwise Apurva Ma'am will personally come and kill. <laughs> no, no, I don't kill. <laughs> Thank See, you. Amazing. Yeah. So yes, supranasal retinal dialysis is pathognomonic of blunt trauma. One more uh, favorite question is which is the commonest location of a retinal dialysis? In that case, it's an inferotemporal location. But when you have a supranasal retinal dialysis, more often than not, most of the times, it is suggestive of blunt trauma. That's great. Let's see what's happening here. Again, the same five names. Come on, we want some new names coming up too. So, a twenty-seven-year-old man presents with posteriorly dislocated lens with a history of trauma three months ago. What surgery should be done? Now, look at this carefully. Should you do a vitrectomy and lens aspiration with cutter and an SFIOL? Should you do a vitrectomy frag and put an IOL in the sulcus? Should you do a vitrectomy alone and put an iris claw, or you should remove the lens via the limbal root? Very easy question. Just look at it carefully. Yeah, thank you. So, obviously, you cannot put a, a sulcus IOL in a patient with posterior dislocated lens. You cannot do just a vitrectomy and put an iris claw because there's a dislocated lens in the vitreous. and you should definitely not remove the lens via the limbal root when it is dislocated you need to do a vitrectomy why i am saying lens aspiration with cutter is because such young patients will not have sclerosis and will not require a phragmatome so a frag is not really needed it will come in your cutter and you put an sfio right so the scoreboard is showing that again is quite static I must say these five people are doing pretty pretty well, and we have Dr. Rituja coming up six places. Great. Let's see what's happening next. So, what? Which of the following acts like a VEGF trap? It is, is it bevacizumab, aflibercept, pranibizumab, or brolizumab? So not only does aflibercept uh, trap uh, most of the isoforms of VEGF, it also uh, acts against PDGF. So it is uh, called a VEGF trap because it binds to all the isoforms of VEGF. That's wonderful. So eighty nine have answered, and I think that will not reshuffle the scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> so twenty four people have answered three questions in a row. Ma'am, they like you right now. <laughs> they are able to answer. Internal examiner is here to save the day. <laughs> Actually, Apurva nearly and nearly answers the question. Sorry? No, no, Apurva, my God, gives so much of hint. <laughs> She nearly answers the question. <laughs> Look carefully. <laughs> now if the external is so strict sir so terrifying and what to do yeah. unko to thoda yeah. relax karna padega na yeah yeah he was features of chronic retinal detachment include all except retinal cyst subretinal gliosis open funnel rd and a membranous echo on b scan with medium reflectivity
so yeah uh, open funnel rd is a feature of chronic retinal detachment because when you have an open funnel you are talking about a considerable degree of pvr but all most often uh, on b scan and rd will always have high reflectivity so that is the most uh, appropriate answer uh, that membrane is echo with medium reflectivity is unlikely on a b scan of chronic rd cysts and srg yes it is a feature of chronicity very thin atrophic retina is a feature of chronicity open funnel rd uh, is uh, less like it's 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 taut and it is open and it is attached at the disc once it is taut there is a considerable degree of pvr so that would not be a feature of a fresh retinal detachment I can see that some of the people have not answered the questions. So, guys, just if even if you answer the question just before the timer ends, you have higher chances of getting it right. So, at least answer the question. We we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, the struggle <laughs> is real. <laughs> we are approaching the end. How many questions left? So, four. So all are indications of FFA in diabetic retinopathy except in a diagnosis of ischemic maculopathy. If you want to do a dense asteroid hyalosis with no view of the fundus to distinguish between IRMA and NVE, or to detect features of mild NPDR in a clinically normal fundus. Correct. so you will not do an fa in a clinically normal fundus just to detect features of mild npdr there is no indication of ffa uh, in that case of course you want to see the faz and the regularity circularity and the size and the notching and all that you have to do an fa to diagnose ischemic maculopathy in dense asteroid hyalosis fa plays an important role because fa is a modality which can circumvent the presence of asteroid asteroid bodies and uh, to distinguish between irma and nv definitely uh, uh, nv will leak profusely and irma will not leak on the fa so the fourth one you will not do an fa so purva is, is the question was what is the only indication first only indication out of all this out of all this asteroid asteroid hyalosis should be number one from, from yes yes sir. because you in that case a laser would not be possible that is one of the indications for a vitrectomy yeah. for asteroid hyalosis if Correct. we say indication for vitrectomy in asteroid hyalosis to do endo laser would be you Correct. know yeah so let's see what's happening on the scoreboard we are just reshuffling there everybody now i think the five of you need to just answer quickly that makes a lot of difference don't wait for the correct answer go for the quicker quicker answer all are true about autofluorescence except it maps the distribution of lipofuscin disc hyper autofluorescence is seen in disc drusen retinal vessels appear hyper autofluorescent and the absorption spectrum is between 300 and 600 nanometers so retinal vessels appear jet black they do not appear hyper they appear hypo autofluorescent so uh, it uh, autofluorescence is a very good modality for uh, looking at disc drusen retinal astrocytic hamartoma changes in rp like rp abnormalities due to lipofuscin abnormalities so, uh, lipofuscinopathy is dry amd etc uh, so the answer is uh, vessels being hyper they are not they are hypo correct so we have a new name so sg has uh, taken up the fastest finger first concept and uh, come up great going so we have a neck to neck competition going on here ma'am last three okay. questions left so mechanisms of retinal apposition to the rp include all except so this is a physiology question 
uh, gel vitreous rp microvilli interdigitation with photoreceptor outer segments active diffusion of fluid into the subretinal space metabolic status of the rp cells so you cannot keep the retina opposed to the rp if there is active diffusion of fluid into the subretinal space when in that case it would cause a retinal detachment and not keep the retina attached other three options are obviously the mechanisms of keeping the retina opposed to the rp okay guys vaka these are the last two questions left and abhinya is like no why we not let it go <laughs> she has popped up again that's great just two more questions left so be faster sterile buckling mechanism of action include all except displacement of fluid vitreous away from the retinal break external indentation causing reduction of the vitreous retinal traction movement of gel vitreous towards the break to tamponade it instant sealing of break by cryopexy so there is when uh, any pexy procedure is not instantaneous uh, cryopexy is uh, achieved by ice ball formation and ca ca causing aseptic inflammation causing a retinochoroidal uh, retinochoroidal inflammation and hence apposition so that takes some time that takes anywhere between 7 to 10 days so the, it's not an instant sealing it's a any pexy is delayed delayed uh, in nature so that's the answer although laser pexy is the fastest but cryo is i think 7 to 10 days yes sir okay, same so people we have yeah but one or two people are just shuffling up so uh, just a reminder this is the last question you guys need to back up now let's see what goes on the sixth person really needs to back up so what appears hypo intense on a t2 weighted mri so i think rolika i will answer this question is it vitreous csf white matter or gray matter if i answer then <laughs> no you tell us the answer no acha that way <laughs> orbit orbit imaging person <laughs> So the correct yeah, so, answer is white matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yes, white matter appears hypo intense on T two weighted MRI. Any of uh, like fluid will appear hyper, correct? On T two. Yeah. So vitreous CSF all this appears hyper, and uh, melanin appears hyper on T one. so right. white matter is ulta it looks dark instead of white on so water is always white on t2 that's the way we've always remembered it from the beginning until the end so just a reminder before we go to the final scoreboard uh, we have posted the link of the zoom uh, zoom platform on youtube and facebook portal and the five people who have come on the final top list need to come online immediately to show their faces okay. is that okay yeah yeah should sure. otherwise we won't give the prize let's see what is happening here so the third position is by pg lalit sir please do the honors yeah, yeah third position pg second nikita and first is the 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 sd sd has been very consistent so congratulations to all the winners Shrikanta and S G R uh, runner up. So All can we have uh, can we have S T P G and Nikita? Shrikanta oh. and S G. So you guys can quickly log in on the Zoom platform. Uh, Facebook and YouTube has the link. Would be great if you guys can show up. You can show But, the final uh, board yeah. board in the meanwhile. You know the yeah. full names if you have. It will go. Yeah. Yes. You view full report. Just go to view full report. Right. Yes. I show think all. it's yeah. Show all at the bottom. 
Sure. All. Here, here. At the bottom, bottom, bottom left, bottom right. See you all. No, these are who didn't finish. Okay, anyways, so. Well, you just show those, uh, you know, five people that will, I think. Yeah, I guess. That will help. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. SD, Nikita, PG, Srikanta, and SG. RD is very close. Abhinya dropped out just a little bit. So Do if you see, very Nikita very has more correct <laughs> answers, but uh, I think quickly, I think SD answered more, like, yeah. faster. The accuracy was uh, by Nikita. And Charuta had consistency for a long time. <laughs> so wonderful, these are the wonderful. people. Great. That, uh, I guess they've not received the link. So all of you, please, uh, yeah. five of you, if, it will be great if you can log in. Please yeah. don't shy away. It's your time to show your faces. Proud faces now. Yeah. Yes. In the meantime, uh, I must say thank you, Kaushik sir and Apurva ma'am, for putting up such a great quiz which has covered all the pointers and you have made sure that you've covered imaging, you've covered differential, uh, the different diagnosis, the different chapters. And I think that's very useful because that, that has made everybody recall the last few sessions that we have had. And mm -hmm. Alit Vilma, sir, you have been yeah, no, there. No, I, had, I had promised the doubling of prize money and uh, I did double the prize money. You made but sure. uh, if you are giving it two, I thought three primarily because uh, doubling was at 50 mark, but I thought uh, since it has cost 104, so I thought it was prudent that uh, we should increase the number of, uh, you know, winners also. So that's, uh, you know, very happy. And con congratulations to all the participants, in fact, uh, you know, for showing so much of interest, 104 people logged in uh, simultaneously for one hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially winners, uh, you know, SD, Nikita, or PG. It has been really, really wonderful uh, job done. And kudos to Apurva and Koshik. Uh, Although, although both of them, uh, you know, did a great job. Koshik's questions, as uh, Purva said, were slightly tougher in the beginning, but gradually, I think he relaxed. Sir, they are asking for the link. Uh, can uh, can we say, uh, can we have the yeah. link? Yeah. Also, yeah. I've actually it. posted the link, but I can just uh, narrate out the meeting ID for you guys. It would be nine seven three. Can you please post on the uh, this Zoom platform so that I, I know some people to say? Sure, Koshik, somebody is asking you can directly give it in. No issue. The same link that you came with, Kaushik. Yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, Saurav is here. So SD is here. Yes, actually, the link that I have the meeting ID for you guys, it will be 973. Okay, Saurav is here. I think there's a lag, so probably that's why uh, they're getting the message late. I think they're joining soon. Would you like to wait, sir? I think one minute or two minutes we can wait because uh, they will yeah, join. We've, we've had the IT team post it again. So uh, everybody can try again. Because it's the same link that you have. The same yeah. condition. Yes, sir. So at least we can have, uh, you know, uh, these five people coming on the screen will be good. So I think congratulations. Heads off to Santosh. He must be the most happy man today. Why, Rolika? <laughs> because the reason is, uh, you see, whatever he had in mind, you see 65 episodes of Retina. So, and the questions were well balanced, uh, you see, between Kaushik, Kapurva. They covered virtually all the aspects, uh, if, uh, you know, most of the aspects, if not all covering genetic, physiology, everything. And the reason Santosh must be happy is that majority, a lot of students, in fact, out of 104, had more than 50% right also. So that means uh, the objective is fulfilled. So that was the reason I said Santosh yeah. must be happiest today, uh, you see. And uh, that gives impetus to him because he is a, he's a, he's a go-getter and wants to achieve the best. So... Hats off to Santosh for uh, devising this. And uh, very nice job done by Kaushik and Apurva. Apurva and so special thanks to you, 
for being there for all the retina sessions consistently always mm-hmm. there a call away sir and no, I tried my best this, but i was absent in couple of them because of my personal condition but otherwise i would have so your discussions are our favorite sir we have enjoyed all of them <laughs> And so we will miss you for the next few sessions. So please come on. I I, I actually (laughs) love to I love to discuss. In fact, therefore I was in between interfering with Napurva and Koshibar. You know, whenever small gap was there, I said one one small line. So, but uh, you see, I am actually a happy man today after sixty five regular episodes of Retina Eye Focus. Uh, I know the hard work involved by Santosh and this entire team. It's not an easy job. You see, to devise such a program. and uh, and uh, have uh, so much of participation and so much of education in fact believe me people like us uh, you know all also learn whether you believe it or not uh, once i come to this scene i also a couple of days back go back and read uh, so that you know we are also well prepared to answer this question and teach because teaching i believe is a, is a you know lifelong exercise you keep learning every day uh, junior senior does not matter it's just a learning every day and we learn the best from these exercises So therefore, I said uh, Santosh must be the happiest man today, and kudos to Santosh and his entire team for uh, you know doing such a great job, wonderful job done, Santosh. And uh, and uh, you see special congratulations to these five people, uh, you know S D Shri Kant Nikita P G Abin Abinava. Lot of them uh, I may not know personally, but uh, but they have done uh, you know great job in and uh, as promised. Uh, You see, the first runner-up that is PG gets five uh, k. The Nikita gets ten k, and and the the winner uh, Shri Shri Kant uh, gets fifteen. And I'm sure Santosh uh, will soon dispatch uh, checks to them. And as as promised in the beginning, uh, five first five will receive certificates of uh, merit, and all the participants hundred and four. I'm very happy, Santosh. You must send them certificate of participation at least. Right. So, uh, so the first person is SD. Is the would they, would you like to introduce? Okay, yourself? So, yeah, I was, I was coming one by one. I think you should introduce because I'll be very happy to see where you belong and what are you doing. Yes, starting with SD. You can unmute all of them and come on the screen. Yeah. Is that you, uh, Saro? Yeah, hi, Saro. Uh, I came with my nickname SD. I am actually mm-hmm. Saro Damodaran. Okay. I am presently at Madurai. I work as a consultant in retina services at uh, Arvind Hospital, Madurai. Okay. So this was a wonderful, wonderful experience to mm-hmm. take part in this piece. So any whole nice initiative. So any any feedback uh, you can write to Santosh. I think Santosh has done a great job. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely. So Nikita is there. Yes, sir. Nikita. Yeah, Nikita. Yeah, one plus seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Nikita, tell us about yourself and where are you and what are you doing? Uh, so basically, I'm from Delhi. I've done my post graduation from RP Center, and currently I'm doing MPH with your Edna from PGR Chandigarh. Good, very very nice job done, Nikita. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You should be fastest great? finger plus. I think you you could have won also. Better luck <laughs> next time. So no PG, problem, PG. I had great fun. Yeah, yeah. All of us had great fun. Why do you think we are all glued here? Because we are also <laughs> learning. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. PG, full form. Hello, PG. sir. Sir, I am Dr. Panchmi Gupta. I am okay. from Delhi. Okay, good. So, yes, sister of Dr. Nikita Gupta. So, Achha. are you both in the same room or what is happening? No, I am in Chandigarh. She is in Delhi. Okay. I was wondering how they look so similar. Now I get the picture. <laughs> Where are you in Delhi? Sir, I am working as a medical officer in Dr. Rajan Babu TB Hospital, GTB Nagar. Okay, okay. And where did you had your? Uh, you did also from RBC? No, no, sir. I am a postgraduate of Government Medical College, Chandigarh. Okay, Doctor Sudh, Doctor Sudh, and uh, yes, sir. Doctor Sudh was my HOD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chal, good. I think Thank congratulations you. once again to all these three people, and I am very happy. You see, I must congratulate all the participants because they they showed so much of enthusiasm and uh, answered all these questions. Uh, you know, tried their best, and I hope uh, this was. not only a you know test kind of thing but it was a educative learning says also you see uh, because uh, koshik and apurva they showed all the answers also i am sure uh, this is a great learning exercise also so thanks once once again uh, santosh rolika and your entire team and thanks to the cfs for uh, asking me to chair this retina session which i thoroughly enjoyed 
and i will request uh, we see more and more people to learn from this uh, great program device for santosh sir i think our, our other top five people have also yeah. shrikant oh, yeah. uh, dr there? shrikant okay. and dr sanali that would be sg and there, shrikant where are you yeah yeah sg yes you guys can unmute yeah go ahead so sir i am sanali gupta yeah, yeah. i am uh, um, so, uh, i am currently working as a consultant at esi hospital noida i have done my fellowship from uk in pediatric ophthalmology and neuro ophthalmology but now i'm back and working there as a specialist great great job great job done and thank you for participating thank you sir and yes last yeah i have uh, sent all of you the link uh, yeah. like my phone number on the chat you think, uh, so you party want to yeah yes sir yeah Hi, yes. hi everyone. Uh, I am Dr. Shrikant. I am currently working as a junior ophthalmologist in LB Prashad Dai Institute at Bhubaneswar Campus. I did my residency from AIMS New Delhi. So, thank you. Great, great. Yes. So, thank you all for participating and making this program very lively and very interactive, and I think learning for all. So, with these words, I think uh, Kolika, you can announce the last. Uh, Yes, sir. Program? So, just wanted to say that all of you, please uh, make sure that you send your details so that we can send your uh, prize as well as the certificates duly. And I've shared my phone number on the chat box, so all five of you have it. And uh, uh, this is Dr. Rolika here. And just send it, send me the details, and I'll get back with all the prizes for you. And thank you so much, uh, Dr. Radhika Verma, sir. Dr. Koshik Tripathi, Dr. Uh, Apurva Achit, and Dr. Devakant sir, all of you, thanks a lot for ending Retina session so beautifully. And we will be starting with Strabismus next, and the details will be shared with you shortly. So thanks yeah. again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.